Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Formula One is finally on its summer break and we can take stock of everything that has happened so far in 2024 and see how every driver is doing halfway through the year, giving them a score between 1 and 10. This is weighed up against expectations as well as just where they are in the point standings. Spoiler alert, but you won't see a 10 out of 10 driver on this list. A 10 out of 10 season so far would be a win in every race, with 1 out of 10 being crashing at every race, burning the garage down and accidentally sleeping with a team principal's wife. This is of course just my opinion and I invite you to tell me yours in the comments below so I can laugh at how much more right I am. So with that, let's jump into this look at every Formula 1 driver's 2024 season so far. Valtteri Bottas, 2 out of 10. Moving to Sauber was always going to be a backward step for the Finn with 10 Grand Prix wins to his name, but 2024 has been the biggest of all possible backward steps. Halfway through 2024, he is last in the standings. He has no points. His best finishes are a couple of 13th places at Monaco and Canada, and the only real light at the end of the tunnel is the single retirement so far. Sauber are in a holding pattern. They have no interest in advancing until Audi come along and take over the show in 2026. And there is no guarantee for Bottas to get a seat when they do take over. I said he would have been better off in world endurance, and I was right. Logan Sargent, 2 out of 10. Same goes for Logan Sargent, no points, a lucky 11th at the British Grand Prix, and almost certainly without a Formula 1 drive for 2025. If he scores no points this year, then the only Formula 1 point in Logan Sargent's two seasons came at last year's Texas round and he only got that because Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton were disqualified. It's been largely disappointing for the American. I hope he gets something from the last 10 races. Zhou Guanyu, 3 out of 10. The Chinese driver is stuck in the same boat as teammate Valtteri Bottas, only ahead of him because of an 11th place in the opening race and definitely having the worst luck on the reliability front. But we have seen glimmers of hope from Zhou. A great drive in the Chinese sprint race didn't lead to points, but he at least stood out. Given he is younger and has China money backing him, I half suspect he'll get another year at stake Sauber before Audi come along. I just hope we can give him something worth a damn because he really deserves it. Alexander Albon, 5 out of 10. The Thai driver arguably came into the season with more hype than anyone else in the field bar Max Verstappen and apparently everyone was chasing the opportunity to sign him for 2025. Well, the rumours have cooled off. 2024 has been incredibly average for Albon. Williams have slipped back a bit and points have been hard to come by. Alexander Albon has still excelled when compared to his teammate, but he's only finishing the points twice and has slipped to the best of the back markers. He signed for Williams in 2025, so this isn't the end, but I bet he wishes 2024 would come to an end. Esteban Ocon, 2 out of 10. Alpine have had a rough year, but that's not why Esteban Ocon only has a score of 2. Crashing into his teammate at the Monaco Grand Prix and being openly criticised by the team and sacked for 2025. He's lucky to get a driver at Haas next year because without it, he would be gone. I don't think anyone else was all that interested in the former Grand Prix race winner. Kevin Magnussen, 4 out of 10. Probably the last season of Formula 1 racing for K-Mag. He's been replaced at Haas and there are not too many options left for 2025. He's had a lot of penalty points in 2024, a few crashes and incidents here and there, and he's only scored 5 points. He's also been completely dominated by his teammate Nico Hülkenberg. With all that said, I had low hopes for Haas anyway, and Kevin Magnussen has shown flashes of speed and been typically in the midfield fight, so it's not been dreadful, even if it is for the final time we see him in Formula 1. Pierre Gasly, 3 out of 10. He's never had this few points at this stage in any season previously, and this is his seventh season. Alpine have been the biggest problem for Gasly and Ocon. The car has been seriously uncompetitive, six points so far, no finish higher than ninth, and not a lot of hope for the rest of 2024. Pierre Gasly at least has a drive in place for 2025, because he'll be happy to write this year off. Oliver Behrman, 11 out of 10. I said there weren't any 10 out of 10s, I didn't say there wouldn't be an 11. Oliver Behrman stood in for Carlos Sainz Jr. at one race for Ferrari. That 7th place in Saudi Arabia is good enough for 14th in the championship despite everyone else doing 14 Grand Prix. 
He's got a Formula 1 driver of Haas for 2025, despite having a pretty terrible time in Formula 2 for Prema. It really gets any better for young drivers. Oli Behrens certainly isn't a one-race wonder. He has a bright future, possibly even Lewis Hamilton's eventual replacement. Daniel Ricciardo, 5 out of 10. It started badly, and the possibility that he may be replaced has never really gone away all year. He's been outpaced by his teammate at most races, which hasn't helped. He's also getting on in years, but things have improved in the most recent Grand Prix. Ricardo has put some points on the board and has possibly done enough to survive to the end of the year. I don't think he'll be back though. Red Bull have too many talented juniors to keep an underperforming Daniel Ricardo in a seat. We want Liam Lawson, Isaac Hadjar and Ayumu Iwaza as they're all pretty good. Time for the Australian is running out. Yuki Tsunoda, 7 out of 10. The Japanese driver is having one of the best seasons of his career so far. Consistently scoring points, no big mistakes, and he's doing very well indeed. He will have been disappointed to see Sergio Perez get the nod for the rest of the year, but he has to be in the running for a seat at Red Bull in 2025. He has improved massively year after year. He's got better in a car that's only got worse over time. Outpacing his teammate, getting into Q3 every now and again, Sonoda really is one of the top drivers of the year so far. Nico Hülkenberg, 8 out of 10. I was disappointed when Haas replaced Mick Schumacher and with Nico Hülkenberg. I thought it was a very regressive move and I couldn't have been more wrong. Nico Hülkenberg is destroying K-Mag in 2024. Amazing qualifying performances have pushed him higher into the midfield, but the plump cherries on the rather delicious cake are the two sixth place drives at the Austrian and British Grand Prix. He's secured a drive for 2025, albeit with stake Sauber, and is on form to help Haas to their best finish in the Constructors since 2018. Lance Stroll, 5 out of 10. Not awful, but hardly spectacular either. Aston Martin have slipped very far off the pace, and the fact Lance Stroll is in pretty much the same position as last year is a sign he is racing at his level. He's been fine. No big mistakes come to mind, just lacking outright pace. Mixed with the fact Aston Martin are also lacking pace. It makes this a very mediocre season for Stroll. Fernando Alonso, 6 out of 10. It's the usual consistent Fernando Alonso. He's clear of his teammate and scoring points at the majority of races. It'll be disappointing not to be challenging for podiums and wins like last year. But Alonso at least is being Alonso and doing about what you'd expect from Alonso in an Aston Martin. Not spectacular, but certainly best of the rest. George Russell, 4 out of 10. This should have been an 8 out of 10, and it would have been if not for the disqualification in Hungary. All down to a little bit of weight, a worn down plank and sweat, apparently. So this is a pretty poor season behind Sergio Perez, despite finishing first twice. He crashed at the end of the Australian Grand Prix, and has gone from comfortably beating his teammate to being left behind by his teammate. There is a good driver there somewhere, but he lacks a bit of consistency. If Mercedes can continue to give him a car that can run at the front, then expect more Russell wins, maybe even in 2024. Sergio Perez, 3 out of 10. No wins, dominated by his teammate, a string of poor qualifying performances and crashes and constant speculation that he's going to be replaced. Even at Spa, when he was running at the front of the field, he soon dropped back and got left by the other front runners in the field. Almost certainly getting kicked at the end of 2025, this is the end of Sergio Perez's long Formula 1 career. He hasn't been on the podium since China, nine races ago, and he's failed to score three times. It's bad enough to put Red Bull's Constructors Championship in jeopardy. His aim for the second year, half of the year is surely just to bow out with as much dignity as possible. Hopefully it won't be the end entirely. I'd love to see Perez try and go for the Triple Crown of Motorsport, Indy 500 and Le Mans next. Lewis Hamilton, 7 out of 10. Hard to say what I think of Lewis Hamilton's season. It started pretty badly and he was being left behind by the field, even having a rare mechanical issue at the Australian Grand Prix. But since then, he's ended a near 1,000 day wait for a win and then got a second, albeit only after his teammate was disqualified. It's an improvement, but he's still 127 points behind Verstappen. So unless Red Bull completely implode, Lewis Hamilton is unlikely to challenge for the title. And it's got to be a worry when you're leaving a team very much on the up for a team that have started to slide back down the field. Lewis Hamilton's final, well, probably final Mercedes season might end up with a top five at best. And that's still a letdown given the legacy he had built up to several years ago.
Carlos Sainz Jr., 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's been fine from Carlos Sainz Jr. He doesn't deserve to be kicked out of Ferrari, and it's definitely going to be a midfield best of the rest kind of performance at Williams. But for his end at Ferrari, another win, scoring decent points, not really doing anything wrong, only 15 points behind his teammate despite missing a race due to appendicitis. It's been fine. Oscar Piastri, 9 out of 10. The real breakout star of 2024 is Oscar Piastri. First win accomplished, even if under controversial circumstances. He has been great, almost completely flawless, and there is a lot more to come in the future for this young man. He's in fourth place in just his second season, with a team very much on the ascendancy. Challenging for the team's championship in 2024, Oscar Piastri could be part of something very, very big. Charles Leclerc, 7 out of 10. Much like his teammate, Charles Leclerc is doing about what is expected of him. It's been an okay year, it's had its ups and downs. He also ended a long wait for a win, within 100 points of Max Verstappen, and it always feels like Ferrari are one big upgrade away from being really on top. It feels like they're starting to drift off, so the second half of the year is really important. Lando Norris, 9 out of 10. Cemented his status as an elite driver, should have added to his single win at Miami with follow-up victories in Austria and Hungary, but both went against him for various reasons. And that's a shame, as he should be at least 30 points closer to Verstappen, and with the advantage seemingly in McLaren's court. If anyone can stop the Dutchman in 2024, then it is Lando Norris, and it says a lot that he seems to have his good friend rattled. Lando Norris has been driving better than anyone else in a Formula 1 car in 2024, and if that continues in a strong McLaren car, then it's surely a matter of time before he wins the title. Max Verstappen, 7 out of 10. But to take that title, he will have to beat Max Verstappen. And despite 2024 being nowhere near as good as the last couple of years, it's hardly been terrible. He feels more challenged and under a lot more pressure, but he still has 7 wins. He still scores points, even when things go against him. He's still the best qualifier in the field. The Red Bull is still plenty quick enough to win races. Max Verstappen is still good enough to win again and again. He's gone four races without a win for the first time since 2020. But with the next round being the Dutch Grand Prix, that race could have a massive say in how the rest of 2024 goes. Since Zandvoort rejoined the calendar, Max Verstappen is the only driver to win there. And that has to be a confidence boost for his home event. It's not an impossibility that Max will lose the 2024 championship but it is very, very unlikely. As for 2025 and the future, who knows? Formula One might actually get really competitive again and not be a Red Bull feasting ground. So they are my ratings on the first half of the Formula One season for every driver. Do you agree or do you disagree? A lot of drivers are having a pretty mediocre run of the mill season, but there are a few standouts and a few really going above and beyond. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more motorsport content. Thank you for watching and have a good one.